The following is a Samsung production. It's time now for the Sam LaSant Show. With your host, Sam LaSant. A Samsung production. Most of us were born and raised in northeastern Pennsylvania. Some of us stayed here. Some of us moved out and came back. One person was born and raised here after high school, went on to Hollywood and been there for many years and has been also coming back here to northeastern Pennsylvania. He uh, calls this area his home. It's my good friend Jack Palance. And we're here in northeastern Pennsylvania today talking to Jack. Jack, I often wondered sometimes why uh, you were so attracted to northeastern Pennsylvania, staying here when you had the opportunities of, of living anywhere in the, in, in the world. Do you want an answer to that? Well, I'd like an answer. Yeah. Sam, <clears throat> I think this is as beautiful as you'll find anywhere, so why would I want to change it? I like going to New York occasionally. It's just around the corner. Philadelphia. The entire area is fantastic. I love it, that's all. That's my reason. The many people uh, who, who were born and raised here uh, up into high school and then went to college or they went out of the area feel like there is, uh, mm. you know, there's always, it's better to be some other place. You know, there's the actions in either Atlanta or uh, Los Angeles or New York City. Um, what, what, the, the difference between the areas and people. <clears throat> well, Sam, when you say it, the action is in places like Los Angeles, there's an awful lot of action, but that's not the kind of action that I want to be part of or be near. I don't like that. I don't like living in a city. In California, I have a place. It's a ranch. It's uh, it's much much smaller than this. The population there is about fifteen thousand. So live in the hills, have a lot of cows, and love doing that, just as I like coming here and seeing the geese on the, uh, on the water. They fly overhead and uh, say hello, and, you know, they drop a few things for me. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how they say hello. <laughs> Missed me, but, uh, <clears throat> well, not always. <clears throat> when um, many people who have seen you or, and when they have seen the show that we did uh, on the road with Sammy and Lane, uh, there, are, there are many young people today uh, who want to get into acting, who want to get into this uh, field. <coughs> what, what do you say to those young people? Good luck. <laughs> it's a tough, tough field, Sam. There's about 10% uh, at best success rate. Uh, seems like something that everybody should be able to do, perhaps everybody can. Acting is no Herculean or Herculean task. It's a, it, it's kind of simple, really. <clears throat> but getting started, <clears throat> getting out there, getting an agent, somebody who's going to find you some work, getting your tickets for the long line when you need to get a lunch, you know, stand there and say, uh, I'm part of the. Uncle Sam's brigade, he said, I could have lunch for nothing. So, <sighs> Sam, that's pretty convoluted. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, uh, I think sometimes... In other words, it is tough. <clears throat> well, I mean, I don't think that's uh, discouraging, though. If a person has a talent, if, if they have a talent, they really feel they have a talent, they have to pursue it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that easy for you when you started. I mean, you, you were struggling out there. I think almost all actors struggle. There are some, some who make it big on the first try. Well, that's not the way it was for me. I was in New York for, uh, in the theater for seven, seven years before I went into film. So <clears throat> there was a lot of training, a lot of working with other people. 
Does it does it make a uh, a major difference as to who you go to train with? Or um, I know you had a lot of great teachers uh, in your time, uh, people who you respected and you work with. Um, just just doing the show uh, that we did on the road with Sammy and Lane, and working with with you. I mean, there's a lot of things you you taught me on different ways that you you talk, you move your hands or whatever. But is it does it does it make a major difference as to who you go and get to school you or to train? Uh, I think it makes a difference, of course. When you said that I studied with an awful lot of people, it's not true. Actually, I studied with two people, two different people, both of whom I liked very much. And, uh, and then a lot of training at uh, Stanford University, where I was in <clears throat> a bunch of plays. And that worked out well, because I was in San Francisco. Stanford is 30 miles away. and. Uh, working with the radio corps all of the time. And that was important. That was before, actually, before the advent of television. So that was good. There, were not, there was an awful lot of training, and I fell in love with it, and I decided that I was going to New York, and uh, off I went. And fortunately, things worked out pretty well. Got a couple of j uh, jobs here and there, and one of them, I, <coughs> the first one, I got two lines in Russian, you know, I stood out there and said my lines as the curtain was coming down almost hit me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That was my introduction to theater. Who were those two people that you said you worked with? You didn't say, but I mean, who were those two people? One of them was a man named Michael Chekhov. Michael Chekhov was the uh, nephew of Anton Chekhov, the great Russian playwright. Uh, and he was the head of the Stanislavski Theater, which was the most celebrated theater of its time. He was the boss man and uh, came here from Russia to uh, do a couple of plays, and then he defected. So he <clears throat> began working with American actors who appreciated him very much. And the second person? The second was a woman in New York. Her name is Betty Cashman. Betty is still living. <clears throat> I was supposed to get in touch with her. This thing that just, just happened within the week has set me back on that because Betty is still alive, and I think she's in her 90s now and uh, uh, not well. So as soon as I get a chance, I will call her. There. But I went to Betty's because she knew Broadway. She knew absolutely everything about Broadway. Her method of teaching was something else. It was a kind of teaching you bravado to stand up there and say, look, you know, this is who I am, and my name is so-and-so. And besides, her class was loaded with beautiful girls. Now, Sammy, how in the hell could you leave somebody like that, you know, <laughs> acting? Who, who were some of the people in that class that made it? I mean, that, that we would know. Uh, I don't think, I don't remember anybody. Mm -hmm. I know that some of them mm -hmm. did make it because her class, she had an incredible record. About 80% of her people were working constantly mm -hmm. at Broadway. Everybody was getting a job. If you said, you worked with Betty Cashman, Broadway knew who the hell that was, and I said, oh, really? Well, do you mind reading this for us? And you say, well, I haven't got much time, but okay, let's go. <laughs> Folks, I'm, I'm talking to uh, Jack Collins here in beautiful northeastern Pennsylvania. We have a lot more. Stay with us. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you're watching the Sam LaSanche Show. I'm Sam LaSanche. We are here um, talking to Jack Palance, a guy who I admired and respect. He's, he's like a second father to me. Um, Jack, first of all, I, I want to thank you for allowing us to come down here. And, and second like uh, father, you're almost as old as I am. Yeah, well, I just I like from? to say that it makes me it makes me young. Just because I knew your father. <laughs> yeah. 
And we beat uh, the hell out of him in baseball. That's not what he told me. He told me that, uh, you know, he said that you were a lousy baseball player. He's there's something about that. I don't know. He said, just watch that curveball. Yeah. You yeah. guys in Latimer always played unfair. You know that? Now that I'm thinking about that. We used to what? You always were unfair. You used to throw stones at the people from parties when they would walk oh, over. Oh, yeah, when they walked up the hill. Yes. Yeah. We were standing as they were coming. No, not as they came to us, as they were going away. <laughs> you too, you too. Because now we had them, and yeah. they're not, we know they're not coming back. <laughs> that must have been uh, interesting, because I remember mm -hmm. in the 50s, we played Latimer, but we would have to walk to the, uh, to the Strippins to, to get to Latimer. Yeah, uh, and at that time, you were called Latimer number two. You just won't let us sign. You just, oh, uh, God. Uh, what is it called now? Parties. <laughs> Parties. <laughs> well, th they took Latimer uh, Mines and they made it Latimer instead of Latimer Mines. One thing I have to say, though, no matter when we traveled around and we did the show, um, no matter where we went and people would come up and talk to you, you always, you know, they ask you, where are you from? Latimer Mines. Latimer Mines. Latimer Mines. It was never L.A. Or, or something like that. We talked about this area, and sometimes a lot of people don't appreciate what we have in this area. I want to ask you a question about uh, your industry. Have you, you know, have you seen a lot of changes in actors today? I mean, people who are, it seems like they come in and they're gone after a year. It's not like before. <clears throat> Sam, that, that may be true, and I cannot comment on that too much because I, well, People ask me what I thought of a film that I did maybe 10, 15 years ago. I can't comment on that because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen myself on the screen in more than 20, 25 years, perhaps. I just stopped going. And an awful lot of actors in Hollywood were like that, a lot of actors that I knew, because you get so tied up, especially if you're that method actor, you get tied up and you gotta do this, you gotta do that. When it's over, man, you just say, hell with that, I don't want anything to do with it. And you don't go to see it ever. So, what was your question? My, qu my question is, you're, you're beginning to answer it. Um, uh, first of all, I don't understand that. I want to get back to that. I understand if you do a film, why you, you wouldn't want to see the film. Because, you know, you, you, I know you worked hard at it, but you'd like to see your finished product. It's like when your paintings, when you're done with your paintings, it's such a beautiful piece of art that you'd like to look at it. But I'm saying that we, we had actors, Cary Grant, uh, Burt uh, Lancaster, uh, people who've been around, you know, the names they sustained. But today, you don't have as many actors. They come in, they're a hit for two years or three years, and then they're gone. Why is that? Is the industry changing, the film industry or the movie industry? Uh, uh, is it changing that much? Except for one year, one and a half years, I think. That was the limit. That was the time limit of my living near the Hollywood area. After that, I moved to Europe lived in Europe for seven or eight years, came back. I had nothing to do with the American industry. <clears throat> now I left to dabble in the arts, the arts, well, that's actually part of the arts, the painting. And that was kind of fun. And living in, uh, living in Rome was a fantastic experience. It wasn't just Rome. It was Rome and Paris and uh, all of the major cities. So that was far more important to me than going to see myself in a film. Mm -hmm. Besides, most of the films that I was in were lousy. Who the hell wants to see them? <laughs> Jack, you have to admit that, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know you don't like to talk about, you know, your popularity, but I've seen it. I've seen it for eight years, and I've seen it no matter where we went. I've seen. Chinese people, uh, black people, uh, all kinds of people uh, come up to you and, and know your name. And, and when we're doing the show in the Gene Autry Museum, I'll never forget this gentleman who came over to us and says, Mr. Palace, I want to thank you for all the, the entertainment you provided for me. Mm. That has to make, that must make you feel good inside. Come on now. Sam. So. 
All I would say is thank you to them. Mm -hmm. And more than that, there isn't anything, really. It's an industry. It's a job. It's like mm -hmm. uh, like my father crawling into a coal mine for 42 years. Mm -hmm. What the hell difference does it make? You take your lunch and you go down and get it. And I, I took my lunch. <coughs> I would take my lunch on the set and then go home. When there had to be something <clears throat> in your life um, that you did not really enjoy. Yeah, I've just been telling you about you were know, talking about enjoying seeing yourself on the screen. That's uh, honestly, Sam, who in the hell cares? If somebody else likes looking at a film, it's fine and you're glad you did it. But once you've done some of that, I remember talking to guys like Robert De Niro about that, and he was he agreed completely. They don't care. They, they, well, once they finish, that's it. Mm -hmm. It may be the different kind of actor the guys who are around today. I don't know that that, that necessarily means anything. Guys who are around today, uh, maybe they like going to see themselves, but we're dwelling on that now, and I don't know why. I don't uh, mm -hmm. go to films. I see maybe two or three films altogether, two or three a year, and that's at most. Mm -hmm. uh, so, When did you, um, mm -hmm. you, you, you wrote two books? Oh, I wrote the one that was published, and uh, I have several, several other three, actually, that are ready for publication. They will be very soon. Uh, I mean within the next couple of months. So <coughs> there's that. And I was supposed to do that art show in, uh, in Scranton, but because of what happened in New York, that whole thing has been canceled at the moment. I sent uh, about 20 paintings mm -hmm. from... from uh, California from Tehachapi. And there they sit in Scranton at the museum. Whether they're going to do the show anyway, whether that's going to happen or not. Then I look around in my studio here and I say, what the hell do you have to send them from California? You got a bunch of them here. When, when the book came out, there was a, 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 a huge success. When you have your art shows, mm -hmm. they're a huge success. Um, once again, <clears throat> it's, it's a tribute to what you've done. Sam, I watched you, I watched you twice this week. And as a tribute to you, I enjoy watching you. I think you've well, really you. got it, so... Uh, an awful lot of us can feel that way about about the other guy. Mm -hmm. I think you're good. I think you're awfully good. Thank you very much. Well, with that, uh, I'm going to take a break. I'm, I don't want. I don't want to say anything else. We'll just take a break. We'll be back right after this yeah, for a couple yeah. of minutes. If you're going to, if you're going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, you're watching the Sam Lasant Show. I'm Sam Lasant, and I'm here with my very good friend Jack Palins, uh, located in northeastern Pennsylvania. Once again, I want to thank you, Jack, for uh, for sitting down and chatting with me. Um, I um, I experienced a lot of things um, in the last twenty some years, um, and when people will, when we did the show. <laughs> on the road with Sammy and Lane, uh, when people would see me, they would come up and say, um, what kind of guy is Jack Palance? What kind of guy is Jack Palance? You know, and I would say, well, you know, I mean, Jack Palance is Jack Palance. He's a nice guy. Um, they also would tell me, you know, or ask me, you know, are you, you know, what are you learn? What are you learning from Jack? You know, the funny thing is, I cannot specifically say one thing that I've learned, but I've learned a lot. You know, and, and, and the reason I, I'm asking you this is because there are a, a lot of young entertainers or people out there who act or who want to go into this in this business. And I think that there's a lot of dedication that young people have to have and perseverance, particularly in, in acting fields. And, 
and there were times when I didn't understand certain things that we were doing in certain ways you told me to look or certain ways you told me to answer a phone or, or whatever. Um, the number of people that have approached me and asked me, is it very difficult to be an actor? I, 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 we touched on it before, but did you find it difficult to be an actor? No. I didn't find it difficult sound because I remember I was, I was in second grade and I was sent to seventh grade very often to read a poem, to recite a poem that I had memorized. So I started a long time ago. My father was an actor in the church. <clears throat> I used to have to go and watch him. And I remember one time he wrapped me and knocked me on my butt. And I said, why? And he said, you don't talk to me like that. He was up there acting and doing very well. And a couple of his men were down there and they were yelling, hey, John, hey, John. And he turned, you're, you're OK, John. He turned around and, and he's on stage. <laughs> and I said, Bob, you don't do that. You can't do that. That's terrible. That's terrible. Pung. <laughs> so I never criticized him again. Your, your dad was, came over from U Ukraine? Yeah. You know, this thing about people wanting to be an actor, if they want to, I admire them. I think there's room, there's a lot of room for good actors, for people who want to try, and people who really, really like it. And you can see that in, in those who have the talent and those who uh, are in it because they do love the business. I'm all for them. I would say go out and do it. Uh, if you get a chance, take a couple of classes, but find out who is good now. Uh, take a few lessons, work with people, get a feeling. You will learn pretty fast whether you've really got it. We can all learn that. I think, uh, I think acting is a wonderful field. It's just too bad that not enough of us get a chance and so on. But you can make your chance. You can do it. You can do it if you want to. Does luck have a lot to do with it? Sure. If you're at the right time, you know, the right place at the right time? <clears throat> oh, I think so. I think luck has an enormous amount to do with it, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You go there and uh, well, if you're in New York, you're standing what they call the cattle line, the cattle call line, when they call and they look at you, and uh, you stand over there, you stand over there, well, that's, that's all luck. So, mm. And agents, I mean, again, you have to get a, a real good aggressive agent. If you can get a real good aggressive agent, you're, uh, you're swinging, mm -hmm. really. You're, they're going to help a lot. There's no question about that. Well, everybody, in closing this interview with you, uh, people want to know what's Jack up to. What are you? What are you up to? What am I up to? Mm -hmm. Are you still? Uh, I'm doing an interview with <coughs> one of my best buddies. <laughs> Guy's name is uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> It's Sam LaSalle, and I'm delighted to do it. I, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't want to do this with... I appreciate it. ...with almost anybody else. So uh, you're, you're going to continue writing books and continue uh, painting and, and doing some, uh, mm -hmm. some more pictures, huh? Yeah, I'm standing on the corner with a cup, please. I'll put please, a couple of pennies please. in there. Of course, I cover up. Yeah. I, went <coughs> I went here yesterday to the... Um, you know, the place we have on the, uh, the freeway and that they have on the Sundays. The flea market? The flea market, yeah. yeah. And there's this guy who's wearing a hat that's way up in the air, and he's got glasses and then another pair of glasses and a third pair of glasses. <laughs> he's got things hanging here. Have you ever seen that no. guy? Oh, you ought to see this. You ought to see this. This, this would be fantastic to, uh, to watch and listen to him while he tells jokes, which are <coughs> not... <laughs> not, very, <laughs> not very good, not yeah. very funny, yeah. but it's just, <clears throat> it's heartwarming yeah. that somebody like that, he's asking for help, he's asking for alms. However, 
he has something to offer too. And he sits there, the, the, what he wears. <laughs> I don't know where the hell he got it, but boy, I'd love to go there and get an outfit like that. I think I could make a lot of money with it. <laughs> <laughs> he sings and he's, he's looking to Oh, he sings, funny. he hums, he tells stories. Mm -hmm. Terrible stories, but, but oh, God, is he a delight. <laughs> really, he's at uh, the flea market. Yeah. Every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, he's for sale. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, I want to thank you for uh, allowing us to come down to your place and uh, speaking with us. Folks, uh, my friend Jack Palance, uh, I want to thank you for tuning us in, and as always, we'll see you next time on the Sam Sand Show. This has been a Samsung production.